Hi everyone, how are you? It's Dr. Splickle, functional podiatrist, human movement specialist, educator about barefoot science, and founder of Naboso. So I had another really interesting patient last week, and I want to turn that into a video and an education opportunity. So I saw a nine-year-old boy who was referred to me for intoing, and I want to take a little bit deeper dive into what are some of the most common causes for an intoing gait pattern in both children and adults. Now, the big three, when you see an in-towing gait, someone who's pigeon-toed is kind of the layman's term for this, is going to be three, metatarsal adductus, metadductus. That's going to be the first one, and we will be discussing all of these in detail. Second one is internal tibial torsion. And then finally, the third big one, and we actually have a bonus one, the third big one is going to be a femoral antiversion antiversion or internal rotation, forward rotation. And then the bonus one that I'll actually talk about towards the end is going to be tibial femoral internal rotation, which is completely different than an internal tibial torsion. So let's get started with metadductus. And I'm going to show you what metatarsal adductus looks like now, from a static image, this is where you could consider this a C-shaped foot or a skewed foot. So you can see that picture there, right? So when you're looking at that foot, the metaductus, you actually get this bowing or curvature inward. Now, you can have what's called metaductus primus, which means it's only the first metatarsal that is swinging inward or curving inward to create that C-shaped foot. Or you can have all five metatarsals that are coming in. That's actually more common is to have all five metatarsals. Now, what we typically see in a metaductus foot, right? We can think of it from the x-ray perspective or if we're looking at it in a more graphical representation here. And I'm going to blow up that, that picture for everyone so you can see. Right, so you can see that difference. Now, that curvature of the foot, what happens is that metaductus starts to increase the arch of the foot. So a classic metaductus foot is going to have this increased rigidity to the foot. They're going to have a higher arch. It might look like they're starting to supinate out onto the lateral side of the foot. And a really fun, interesting fact is that metaductus is actually part of club foot. So club foot, if you're not familiar with that, I'll show you what that looks like. Club foot is a component of, of three different deformities. So here we can see the club foot, right? So that's an extreme rotation into the foot. So a club foot has metaductus, a varus or an inversion of the heel, and an equinus or an extreme plantar flexion. So it's essentially super plantar flexed, super inverted, and then adducted through the metatarsals. That's what club foot is. That's the three subsections. Now, when someone is in towing or has a pigeon toe gait, you typically are suspecting metaductus when they are around newborn to about one to two years old. So when you, when you see a patient or you have a child that's in towing at that age, that's the first differential that you want to have in your mind. Now I'm gonna show you a video of a child walking with metaductus. And this is going to be, I want you to watch this child's left foot and see if you can capture the curvature in his foot. So you're looking on this cutie, you're looking at that foot. Okay, so on this side, right? Do you see that curvature in his foot? So this is where really a trained eye is going to see that curvature. But I'm gonna pause the video for a second. And okay, I'm gonna pause the video right here. Do you see the foot there, right? So we can see this curvature that's happening in the foot. Typically, the parents will be a little bit concerned about this in-towing gait and not understand that it's actually this curvature in the foot. The leg is not rotated inward. Now, the treatment for a child who you're capturing this when they are not even walking yet or they are um, still in a very pliable age, so they're a child, they're a baby still, is you can do stretching, 
you can do casting, you can do straight last shoes, you can do things that are trying to mold and shape and hold and adapt and stretch the foot into a more neutral position. The older that you get, if I saw a child, and actually I saw this nine-year-old child with the intoin who did have a component of metaductus, it's honestly too late. And the dad said that he had tried to flip the shoes around, which is like an old wives tale of how you can do a straight last shoe is just put the left shoe on the right shoe or on the right foot and flip them. Do not do that. That's not going to help a child that is nine, 10 years old who already starts to have some osseous changes in the foot. Okay. Now our second cause of in towing in a child, this is when they're a little bit closer to two to four years old, so you're seeing a, a toddler more, is going to be internal tibial torsion. Now, torsion means rotation, and the t rotation is actually in the bone. So this is not a joint that is internally rotated. This is the bone itself. All of our bones have spirals in them. There's spirals everywhere in the body. We have connective tissue. Our tendons actually spiral. Our Achilles tendon spirals on itself, which is super fascinating with the human body our bones do as well. So this internal rotation is the bone is rotated inward. So if you were looking at a foot, this is going to be my foot, and I'm looking at the malleoli. Your malleoli or your malleolar relationship or orientation should be, and you can feel this on yourself right now, take your right hand and grab your right ankle bone, both of your malleoli with one hand. I can feel that my thumb, which is on my medial malleolus or my tibia, my inside ankle bone, is sitting higher than my fibula. And then I want you to feel that again. And I want you to feel that the tibia is sitting in front of the fibula. So that orientation of your malleoli is oblique, it's angled down, and it's in this anterior posterior position, right? So we have this obliquity in our malleoli, which gives us our ankle joint access. In someone who has internal tibial torsion, if you put your hand on their ankle bones or malleoli, you would actually feel them in many cases parallel to each other. You wouldn't feel that the tibia is in front of the fibula, they're in line. And that's the rotation that is within those bones, okay? So you're looking at the foot this way, you're feeling it, and you would actually feel the malleoli being uh, in that relationship, okay? And that gives that in-towing pattern typically seen in a child two to four years old. Of course, I see this in adults all the time because it was just never treated or they didn't grow out of it. I'm gonna show you a video of a woman or a teenager, female, who is walking with internal tibial torsion. Now, internal tibial torsion, the knee or the patella, the femur, is in a neutral alignment. So the foot is facing, or the knee is facing forward and the toe is going to be inward. Okay, so that's the pattern that we're looking for show you here okay do you see that pattern let me show it one more time and blow this bad boy up here okay one second to everyone here we go here we go Do you see that in her foot, right? So the knee is facing forward. There's um, dots that are on her knee. I'll show you one more time, right? Look at her, right? Perfect, okay? So that's how you're differentiating that, right? What's the femur to patella or knee alignment? And then what's happening down tibial uh, relationship versus the, the ground. So we ruled out metaductus for her, right? Now we're looking at that tibial rotation. You're looking at the malleolar position. That's really how you diagnose internal tibial torsion. You do not do it just through a gait assessment and kind of an eyeballing. You have to look at the malleolar position. Super important, okay? Now, internal tibial torsion, again, for children, um, there is the option to do uh, gait plates, and a gate plate would essentially block the foot and prevent you from going into it and it forces you to turn out. Now there's a lot of controversy around the gate plates. Sometimes I'll recommend them, but when you're compensating or turning your foot out for the internal rotation or internal tibial rotation, they typically do it at the knee joint. So you're 
actually creating a tibial femoral external rotation. Um, so they're essentially correcting their gait through a compensation pattern. Right, we kind of try to avoid that. Um, something else, if they are a child, so typically around, you know, either a uh, child that's not walking, so more of a baby, or the earlier side. So one to two years old, you can totally pick up an internal, exaggerated internal tibial rotation, and you can do Dennis Brown bar. A Dennis Brown bar is essentially these little straight lash shoes that are fixed on a bar, and it's starting to turn the foot out. But again, of the children that I've seen who have used Dennis Brown bars as children, I'll actually show you what one looks like. The Dennis Brown bar is that they've done the correction at the knee joint and they did a tibial femoral external rotation at the knee joint to then correct for the internal tibial torsion. A true torsion in the tibia, in the bone, cannot be corrected through stretching and exercises and things like splints um, or gait plates because really all that you're doing is creating a compensation pattern. The only way to really, really correct a torsional deformity, a true torsional deformity, is through surgery. It's through an osteotomy that's going to derotate the excessive internal torsion. Okay, great. Let's go into your third one. Third one that is actually the most common cause of intoing is a femoral antiversion. Femoral antiversion, similar to the tibial torsion, is going to be a rotational deformity of the femur. So the femur head is actually pushing forward, and then that's creating this intoing pattern. Now for this, you're going to classically see that the whole femur's rotated inward, so then the patella and the knee are facing inward, and then that's driving the foot inward. So it's kind of like the whole lower extremity is intoing. I'm gonna show you a video of that so that you can see how that presents in a child. And this is typically in a child who is uh, four to 10 years old, typically. So the child I saw was nine years old. He had a, uh, he actually had metaductus, a little bit of internal torsion on one side, and then a large amount of femoral antiversion bilateral. So I'm gonna show you this child who is walking, my apologies. Okay. So he's gonna walk back and then he'll, he'll walk back to everyone one more time. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let me just play that one more time for you. Okay, so can you see that? Could you capture that with your eyes? Let me just freeze frame that. Freeze it. Right, so what you're looking at or what you wanna notice is, do you see the knee and the patella are facing inward here, right? So you're looking at that alignment of femur, patella, tibia, and foot. Uh, so then he would be a femoral antiversion. Now, 99%, a majority of femoral antiversion will self-resolve spontaneously by the age of 11. Now, if the child still has that femoral antiversion, rotation inward and the into and gait pattern past 11 years old, and it's quite significant, then again, you're really looking at surgical osteotomies to the bone itself. This is a, a structural, oftentimes structural osteoscopy deformity that we're dealing with. Metaductus, same thing. So metaductus is osseous. Internal tibial torsion, osseous. Femoral antiversion, osseous. What does that mean? You can't do exercises and try to derotate bone within the bone itself, right? So we want to understand that. Now, for the child that I saw who had femoral antiversion, I still gave stretches though. I still had them releasing the internal rotators of the hip trying to get some mobility because the child complains about tightness in the front of the hips and he gets a lot of fatigue, he trips himself. So we still want to try and re reinforce a little bit more of an externally rotated position. 
if the child like to, likes to sit on the floor in like a W with the knees in and the feet rotated out, you want to try to encourage them to sit in a different position. So then you're kind of supporting the derotational component, knowing again that a lot of this is in the bone itself that's rotating. So I try to have them sit more in like a butterfly or a lotus pose versus in the W, doing some mobility work, stretches, things like that. But I did refer this nine-year-old who's going on 10 years old to an orthopedist, an orthopedic surgeon, to get some x-rays and evaluation because of the degree and the significance of his internal rotation. He happened to also be very active, playing sports, and I didn't want him to start tripping on himself or tripping as he's running and playing these sports and essentially limit some of his uh, athletic career, let's say his young athletic career, just because of that. With the metaductus, I told the father to just kind of monitor that. Um, really, there's nothing that you can do outside of surgery for a metaductus past a certain age. And then the internal tubule torsion, same thing, is that we're just monitoring. It was a small degree. Now, what I want as a bonus is that I am going to go into a form of intoing that is not osseous, that's actually joint related. And this is tibial femoral internal rotation. It's not internal tibial torsion, that's completely different. Tibial femoral internal rotation is going to be a soft tissue, oftentimes soft tissue tightness of the internal rotators at the tibial femoral or the knee joint. This is going to be your semimembranosis, semitendinosis, right? And how those, those muscles rotate. How you typically will see this is that the individual will have a great alignment as they're going into their push-off phase and then they bend their knee and as soon as they bend their knee and get into knee flexion, they pop into an internal rotated position. And this individual classically will say that, oh, when I run, I, I hit my ankle bones into each other or I scuff my shoes into each other a lot. That is a soft tissue condition, which is different. And I focus a lot on mobilizing semimembranosis, tendinosis, and then focusing on the tibial femoral external rotators, which is lateral gastroc, bicep femoris, and TFL into the IT band. So I hope that this gives you some good guidelines on how you can start to approach the intoing child, and then of course intoing children that are not treated might become intoing adults. Your big three, metaductus, internal tibial torsion, and femoral antiversion, these are structural osseous rotations or deformities. A lot of them spontaneously resolve or they grow out of them as the bones and the joints are essentially derotating to find our final adult position. And then from there, you can start to build body awareness and stability around each of those different joints. If there is a severe case, you may want to look at a surgical consultation because again, it's within the bone itself. Our bone is conditioned, tibial femoral internal rotation is typically more of a soft tissue. This is looking at the tibial femoral internal rotators. And this is where you'll see where people are scuffing their shoes or tripping over their own feet, but you have ruled out the other three uh, contributors or causes for an intoing gait pattern. I hope that you guys enjoyed and that you learned a lot. If you want to learn more about high approach patients, please go to my website, dremilyspickle.com, head to my YouTube, which is linked to that site as well, or stay tuned for more functional podiatry case studies. Thank you so much.